Welcome to Math City with Miss G. Today we are going to learn how to simplify radicals. What are radicals? So radicals is an expression that contains a square root. So you see a symbol that we usually call square root and another term to describe this symbol is radical. So radical symbol. So we are trying to simplify this type of expression. So first, we are going to find the number that is found on this area of the uh, problem. If you do not find anything, okay, so by the way, we call this number here as index. If you don't find any number, the smallest number, which is the invisible number, is 2. It can be any number higher than 2, but the smallest number that can go in this, um, in this area is 2. Now, because the index is 2, we are going to think about perfect square numbers. And what are perfect square numbers? So we're going to start with trying to find the perfect square numbers. 1 square, that means 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 square, which is 4. 3 square, which is 9. And this continues. So these numbers are what we call perfect square numbers. Why? Because when we take the square root of each of these numbers, square root of 1 is equal to 1. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. Square root of 9 is equal to 3. It's perfect square numbers. Now, I am going to try and find factors of 54 wherein one of the factor should be a perfect square. So I will do 54 divided by 4. Um, and it gives me a decimal, so I am not looking for that number. So I'm going to try the next number, 54 divided by 9. And it gives me 6. So this is the number that I am looking for. So. I will split 54 into um, 9 times 6. And then n to the fifth is actually can be expanded into n times n times n times n times n. And we are going to find um, groups of 2 because the index is 2. So this is one group. This is another group, so we can write this as n square, um, which is one group. This one is n square, and this one is a remainder. So down here, I'm going to bring down n square, n square, and the remainder n. Drop down negative 7. So you can actually rewrite these and expand this even more. But you don't have to do it this way. I'm just going to show you so you can see visually what is going on. So anything that are perfect square is going to become a whole number. So we're going to drop negative 7. Square root of 9 is 3. Remember, on the perfect squares, it is on the list. So this is times 3. Um, Square root of 6 is not on the list, so it stays inside a radical. This will turn out to be n, and this will just be turned out into an n, while the other two numbers, square root of 6 and n, is going to stay inside the radical, while this each of these numbers will be separated by a period, meaning multiplication. Let's simplify. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. n times n is n squared. We add the exponents of the same base. Square root of 6n. And there is our answer. The simplified radical. Let's try another problem. This time, the number, um, the index is 4. So I will be thinking of perfect fourth root so that would be one to the fourth which is one meaning one times one times one times one and then two to the fourth you multiply two by itself four times that is 16 
um, 3 to the 4th is equal to 81. Now, I am going to try and divide 324 divided by 16. And that gives me a decimal. So, no, it, this does not work. So, I will try 324 divided by 81. And this gives me positive 4. So, meaning I can use the factors 81 and 4. So, 81 times 4. And then I'll drop 10 fourth root of n to the third. So, I can't find groups of 4 in 3 because 3 is smaller than the index. So, we'll simplify. So, um, this uh, cube root of 81 is equal to, all right, so we've got cube root of 81. We already figured that out. That is equal to 3. So, this will be equal to 3. And then the remainders, fourth root of 4 and to the third. I don't know what, it, what that 4 is doing right there. But what we've got right now is basically 10 times 3, which is 30, fourth root of 4 and to the third. Let us try another problem. This time, it, the index is 5. So I'll be looking for perfect fifth root. So 1 to the fifth is 1. 2 to the fifth is 32. And then 3 to the fifth, that's a very big number. That is going to be 243. So um, I will try and divide 96. I'm trying to ignore the negative at this time. So 32, um, and that will give me a 3. So therefore, I can split 96 into um, 32 times 3. So 32 times 3 is negative 96. I'm going to put a negative sign where 32 is. Why? Because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And that is actually how we expand 2 to the fifth. So if a negative 2 to the fifth, I mean. So if we're going to multiply this 2, that would be positive 4. This one would be positive 4 as well. So that's 4 times 4, which is 16. And then multiply 16 by negative 2, which makes 32. But it is going to be negative because the 2, the remainder is, um, the, remain, um, the last number is negative 2. So I've got to put the negative by the 32. So this is possible that the radicand, what radicand am I talking about? These numbers here are called radicands. So that the radicand is negative only when the index is an odd number. Because if we will have a square root of negative 4, this will give us an error if we put this in the calculator, meaning it's not possible, meaning it does not exist. But if I will do negative um, cube root of negative 8, this means the answer is negative 2. Because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 8. Hopefully that makes sense. Let us go back to the problem that I am solving. So this is fifth root of, and I can find, okay, so p to the 10th over 5, which is the index that is going to be groups of 2. So you can divide the exponent with the index. So um, this would be negative 2 uh, Fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. So we'll write negative 2 times negative 2. Fifth root of, oh, the p to the 10th needs to be in there. And then fifth root of 3 
and p to the 10th that is actually need to be on the outside so how many groups of five that would be a two so our final answer is four p square fifth root of three okay because uh there are five groups of um i mean two groups of fives in ten and there's our simplified radical expression let's do one more and that last number is in uh, uh index is three so i'll be looking for numbers that are perfect cubes so one to the third is one two to the third is eight three to the third is 27 and again this continues these are just the numbers i'm using because they're smaller um we have 54 again i'm gonna try and ignore the negative sign divided by eight and it is possible so therefore i am going to be using oh wait a minute not not eight because this is going to be a decimal so i'll try 54 divided by 27 and that will give me a2 so let's rewrite so cube root of negative 27 again i am going to make right so cube root of negative 27 that is equal to negative 3 okay which is this one right here so um times that would be multiplied by two and how many groups of three can we find in eight so we can find k to the third and then another k to the third that's one group another one group and there is a remainder of two so six six i mean three plus three is six and then plus two is eight that makes the exponent eight so let's simplify we will have negative eight times negative three and then these two groups of k which would be k to the second two groups of k to the third um and the remainders are cube root of two k to the second power so negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24 k to the second power cube root of 2k square all right all right thank you for watching this video if you find value please hit subscribe and share i would really appreciate your support I'll see you in my next one. Bye.